All right, welcome everybody. This is the 10th Gracie on a really cloudy and foggy morning of Friday. I was expecting a really sunny day, but it's not sunny. My goodness sake, hey, I don't know what's going on, but honestly, it doesn't look like a good day. It's really, really cloudy. I don't like this. But anyways, we are here with a beautiful class and we are introducing the new unit, which calls Science Counts. Science Counts. Uh, today is the 30th of July. Some of the last days of July. Now, in today's unit or this semester's unit, we'll be checking on science idioms, verbs of direction, verbs of movement, inventions and discoveries. That will be our vocabulary part. In the language part, we will be checking a second conditional past simple and use two. In terms of production, we'll be talking about scientific discoveries and invention. We'll be talking about past habits and imaginary situations. Imaginary situations, which is really nice. Okay. And uh, to introduce the unit, it would be a good idea to talk about science. And then we're going to talk about the rest of things in the book. So I have a question here. First question talks about what's the difference between uh, a discovery and an invention? What's the difference between a discovery and an invention? What's the difference between a sometimes uh, Discovery and an, in, an, an invention. Okay, anyone, let's go. What's the difference between a discovery and a scientific invention? Invention is something that you come up with, yes. and discovery is something that have been there all the time, but you just realize that it's there. Discovery. Wow, it's something uh, that's been there all the time. Okay, so we can say that, for example, an invention is something that you come up with. Okay, this is a phrasal verb. This is an advanced phrasal verb. That's very good. If you come up with something, it means you create, right? It's something created, or we can say it's something man-made, right? Man-made or human-made. And if a discovery that's being always there or been it's been there all the time, that means that is in the nature, right? Is it something like that, Emiliana? Yes. Yes. Okay. So something that you come up with. That's true. That's true. And uh, the other one is something that is in there, is in nature. Good. I agree with the description. Yeah, pretty much agree. Like it. Pretty nice. Okay. Let's carry on with a second question. We're talking about great people in science. Okay. Inventors. Can you, can you give me some names of inventors? Just give me names. Names of inventors. Can you give me any names of inventors? People. Any good names? Famous inventors. Any idea? Beautiful, beautiful people, anything? Uh, Sergio, any inventor, any famous inventor that you may would like to share? Any famous inventor? Inventor? Sergio? Good morning, sir. Okay, you're a man of culture. Maybe you know. A famous inventor. Famous inventor. I 
think about it meanwhile. Okay, let me ask again to another person too. Um, Emilio, any famous inventor that you can think of? Any famous inventor that you may think of? Famous inventor. What? Any famous inventor that you can think of? Come on, you guys, you have studied history. A famous inventor. Paracetamol. No, inventor, no invention. Inventor, not invention. The Wright Brothers. Okay, yeah, the Wright Brothers. I don't brothers. know how to pronounce it. Yeah, Wright Brothers. Yeah, the Wright Brothers. Uh, what, what's going on with them? What did they invent? The plane. The plane. Yes, thank you. The first plane. Good. Awesome. 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 The plane. Okay. Any anything else? Another inventor. Another inventor, people. Anything else? Another inventor. Can you think of anything? Any any other inventor? The Wright Brothers is one. Yeah, the plane. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Agree. Anything else? The cheese. Cheese. Uh, cheese is an invention. Yeah. Yeah, cheese is an invention because milk is not an invention. Milk is a discovery because it, it's, it's there in the cows. But cheese, tell me, who invented cheese? I love cheese, by the way. Who yeah, I don't know, but mm -hmm. it's in the desert, I guess. But it's in the desert, like a person in the desert. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Okay, let's see another one. Uh, what about what about the internet? What about the internet? What about the internet? Do you know who invented the internet? Mm, okay, don't worry. It seems like you know very good with inventors. <laughs> don't worry. So you can think of lots of them. You can think about Nicolas Flamel. You can think about uh, this guy, uh, Alexander Fleming. You can find Thomas Edison. You can find this guy, uh, Nikola, Nikola Tesla, Nikola Tesla. Elon Musk is an inventor. Okay, so now tell me, what personality characteristics, or personality traits, must are I mean are essential, are essential to be an inventor? What personality characteristics you need to be an inventor? Creative. Sorry? Creative. Creative, yes. So um, I was right here. Oh, my computer is stuck. Okay, yeah. To be an inventor. Um, inventor, you need to be creative. What else? What else? How else do you need to be? How else do you need to be to be an inventor? Anything else that comes to your comes to your mind? Intelligent. Intelligent, okay. Okay, what else? What else? For example, if something doesn't work and you say, I have to try it again and again and again and again. What's that? How do you call that? You have to try it again and again and again and again. Perseverant. Yeah, perseverant. Perseverant or persistent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. What else do you have to be? How else do you have to be to be an invent to, to be an inventor? What if you fail? What if you fail a lot of times? Oh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work it again. Says positive. Ah, yeah, to be positive. Positive. I like that one. Very nice. To be positive. Because sometimes it, it, it's not going to work, right? 
uh, but if you if it doesn't work once, and if it doesn't work twice, patient. You need to be patient. You need to be patient because patient because if you're patient, you can make good decisions, right? Um, you have to be tolerant. Tolerant to what? Tolerant to what? When a person fails or when a person makes an error, usually they're like, ah, no puedo más, or ah, ah, and they, 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 they don't continue the projects. What is that? To learn to fail. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, ability. To learn from errors or mistakes. Yeah, yeah, good. You need to be tolerant to frustration, okay? Because I imagine that sometimes it's not gonna work. It's not gonna, it's not gonna work at all. So I think you need to be tolerant to it. I mean, it won't be perfect all the time. It won't be perfect at all. So you need to be tolerant to that. Yeah, I agree. Good. Positive, I like that. Good. And learn from the mistakes. All right, good. Uh, okay, tell me now, can you make a top 10 in the chat? In the chat, can you give me some, some inventions that you think are revolutionary? The most revolutionary inventions that you can think of. What are the most revolutionary? Okay, I'm going to write them here on the slide. Think, give me inventions that change the world. Okay, okay, I'm here. Give me some. La agricultura. Okay, that's an invention. Agriculture. What else? Agriculture. Agriculture. What else changed the world? Mining. Yeah. Mining. But it, Let's go to the specific because mining is like a general thing. Maybe there is an invention like the drilling, I don't know, the, a certain kind of truck, a certain ex explosive. Okay, what else? Inventions that change the world. The gravity. But gravity is not an invention. Creo que tengo dudas. Invenciones como descubrir o como... Uh -huh. o qué? Just like Emiliana mentioned. Emiliana mentioned in number one, it says an invention is something that you come up with, okay? Something that you create, something that you invent. Uh, and it's, it's man-made, okay? It's man-made. But the discovery uh -huh. is something that has been there forever, right? Like a... Fire, for example, fire is a, is a discovery. It's not an invention. We didn't we didn't invent fire. Electricity is also a discovery. We didn't invent electricity. No. Okay. What else? Sorry. Thermometer. Thermometer. No sé cómo salir seguro. What? The what? Pinto? El método científico, ¿no? El método científico. Dijo termómetro. Ah, the thermometer. Ah, yeah, the thermometer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thermometer. Oh, thermometer. 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 The thermometer. Okay, anything else? Come on, you're using a lot of inventions. La imprenta, yeah, the printing press. I think, yeah, Sergio, I'm with you. The printing press. Printing press. Come on, what else? Inventions that change the world. The language. Cars. Language. I think language, yeah, yeah it's an invention. Language. Cars. Cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cars, absolutely. What else? What else are great inventions? You say, yeah, this is a great invention.
Anything else? I think it comes with printing press, but books. Books. Yeah, books and printing press. I agree. They are kind of together. Yeah, books. Yeah, they were in, they were invented. Book books uh, don't exist in nature. You can't find a book in the forest. You have to create it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Books. What else? What else? Boats. Sorry? Barcos. In English. Boats. Boats. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Uh, boats. Boats and ships. Yes, boats and ships. Great inventions to transport and uh, people and to transport goods, big goods from one country to another. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, what else? Someone in the other class asked me, teacher, is the internet an invention? Yeah, absolutely. The internet is a great invention. Yeah. With the internet, you can play with friends. You can make classes now. Uh, you can talk to your friends in Discord. You can woo, You can uh, work. On the internet, no, internet is something great, it's something fascinating. So it's an invention, it's not a discovery, okay? The internet. So I would include that one too. Okay, so let's see now. All right, we're gonna have a look at a short video. And we're gonna see if your videos, I mean, if your guests were there. Let's see if we, if we can find some of the, the printing press and others that you mentioned. Okay, top 10 inventions of all time. Let's do this. Here we go. Top 10 inventions of all time. Let's go. These ideas changed the world. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 inventions of all, Give me the subtitles, all time. Number 10, paper. One of the Chinese people's four great inventions, paper was invented and developed in the second century BC by the Han Dynasty. Mm -hmm. The idea eventually traveled to Europe, where paper mills began manufacturing the product on a larger scale. Without paper, the printing press would never have been invented, I mean, and our world right. would be very different. We would not have maps, paper currency, or books to disperse information. Its impact is truly endless. Number 9. The Compass Before the compass, sailors depended on landmarks or even the stars to navigate their ships. But once the Chinese began using lodestones and magnetism to find their bearings between the 9th and 11th centuries, it quickly spread to the Arab world and to Europe. This not only made circumnavigation of the globe easier, it also made it safer, which kicked off the age of discovery. Number 8. Refrigeration Though ice was used since prehistoric times to prevent food from spoiling and developing bacteria, the concept of refrigeration was only developed in earnest starting in the mid-1700s. The process was then refined and improved, changing the way the food industry transports and stores food. The implications of this discovery are far-reaching as it transformed the way we eat and live. Number 7. The Printing Press Though Johannes Gutenberg is credited with this invention, he actually perfected and popularized existing technology. By combining the Chinese principle of movable type with European press systems already in use for winemaking, Gutenberg created the machine that printed text on a wide scale, which in turn lowered the price of books and helped spread information and knowledge to the masses, spurring the Reformation, the Renaissance, and the Scientific Revolution. Number 6. Plumbing The landscape of major cities would be drastically different without this innovation. After all, how would a high-rise exist without modern plumbing? Evolving from holes in the ground to chamber pots to outhouses and eventually to flush toilets as early as the 31st to 26th centuries BC, the development of plumbing improved living conditions for millions of people across the globe and lengthened our lifespans. 
Number five, medicine. Many medicines and vaccinations have extended and changed our lives significantly. Discovered by accident by Alexander Fleming, penicillin was the first group of drugs that fought illnesses like syphilis and strep infections. On the other side of the spectrum, since they were introduced to the public in the 1960s, contraceptives such as the birth control pill helped level out the global population and launched a revolution in social change. Mm -hmm. Number four, engines. These engines got industry and the population moving. Instead of relying on horses as transportation, people traveled across the countryside via Thomas Newcomen's steam engine as of 1712, which was improved upon by James Watt later that century, quickly becoming the backbone of society and sparking the Industrial Revolution. Internal combustion ultimately replaced steam and ushered in the second Industrial Revolution and allowed individuals to affordably travel great distances. Number three, the wheel. Though it's still unclear which civilization was first to invent this simple machine in the 4th century BC, it's obvious that it's been one of the world's most vital innovations. The transportation, commerce, and travel industries wouldn't be the same without it. Yeah. And today, the wheel can be found in every aspect of our daily lives, from water wheels, gears, motors, and engines, to more fun applications. Number two, communications. Several inventions changed global communications forever. Samuel Morse brought us the electric telegraph in 1836. Mm -hmm. Alexander Graham Bell's telephone was the first to be awarded a patent to transmit voices in 1876. Guglielmo Marconi and Nikola Tesla developed radio in the late 19th century. Moving pictures first came across John Logie Baird's television in 1925. Conrad Zuse developed the first computer in the early 40s, and Tim Berners-Lee proposed the World Wide Web in the late 80s. And they all made the world a little bit smaller. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Cotton gin. Gunpowder, yeah. Yeah. Optical lenses. Okay, yeah. Camera. Mm -hmm. Number 1. Electricity Not only did sleep patterns change drastically with the introduction of electricity, so did work habits. From Ben Franklin to Nikola Tesla to Michael Faraday to Thomas Edison, many innovators made important contributions to this modernization, which brought light and power to the masses. However, electricity only became a necessity and standard to everyday life in the mid-20th century. Before that, it was enjoyed mainly in the big cities. Do you agree with our list? Which inventions could you not live without? For more informative top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you agree with the list? Do you re agree with the list, people? Yeah. Yeah, I think electricity by far really really important imagine a life i think what about those games um the last of us two the last of us one they live in a world with no electricity right or no do they live in a world with no electricity okay the, all those games all those games and movies that they happen like um like in the future, like an apocalyptic future. They don't have electricity. So it looks terrible. It looks terrible. So computers, off. Uh, what else works with electricity? Mobile phones, no. Um, video games, TV. Uh, some kitchens, they have electricity. Uh, electric boiler, electric kettle. The, there's some microwave ovens they work electricity lights in the streets oh my goodness it would be a different world yeah electricity for me really important um and this one here penicillin where is it well refrigeration is really important super important so the food can be uh stored for many many for a lot of time penicillin really important penicillin in the past, people died uh, a lot because of, you know, something super common. Okay, people, we're going to go to the book now.
All right, we go into the book now and here we are on the page. Yes, we are on the book now, let's move it. Now this is unit number eight, which is the number four for us, science counts. And what we have here are some pictures, mm -hmm. some pictures of things. Uh, can we quickly name them, what things they are? Fire, a wheel, electricity, smartphones, paper, and cars. Electricity, a phone, paper, and a car. Good. In this case, a cell phone, yes. In American English, cell phone. In the UK, is mobile phone. So both options are correct. Electricity, I think, is the best. So let's have a look. Um, you, Emilio, what about... What about, uh, which of them are inventions? The car, mm -hmm. what's that? Is it, yeah. yeah, electricity, paper, the wheel, y... yo dije smartphone, pero que otra cosa dijo que se podía llamar? Uh, which of them are inventions? Inventions. No, pero cuando yo dije smartphone, hay otra ah, forma de llamarlo, well, ¿cuál era? Uh, cell phone. Ah, yeah, eso. Cell phone. Todo menos, la, todo menos el fuego. Okay, okay. So fire is a discovery. But what about electricity? Okay, I opened the I opened the debate now. Is electricity an invention or a discovery? Mm, sexy question. What do you think, people? Is electricity a discovery? Or an invention. It's a discovery. Discovery. Okay, you think it's a discovery. Okay, I feel I feel the same. Let, let's ask this thing. Is electricity? Oh wait, I can't see with these things. Okay. An invention or discovery? Decoder. Okay. I mean, your picture is really cool. A genius invention, electricity power. So electricity power is an invention, but electricity itself is the discovery of electricity. Yeah, discovery of electricity. So it is a, it is a discovery. It is a discovery, electricity. Amazing. Oh, Nikola Tesla. Math discovered or invented? Well, that's a very good question. Mathematics. Mathematics. Invented or discovery? What do you think? So the question is here, would mathematics exist if people didn't exist, if, if people didn't? So for example, you have to remove people. So fire, if there are no, no people in the planet, uh, would we still have fire? Yeah, volcanoes and because it's very hot, make fire. Electricity, yeah, on the, on the storms, the thunderstorms. So yes, we have, it's a discovery. Good. All right, let's go. Ah, sorry, I was showing the book and I was here. Here. Is math a discovery or is it invented? Well, I think they are invented. Like the mathematical language, I think it's invented. All right, so uh, let's continue. So what we're going to have a look now is a story about science. So with this, we're going to have some people reading. This, we're gonna have a look at two people, two very important people. Uh, Newton, Newton, Isaac Newton. And also we're gonna have a look at Archimedes. Archimedes, okay. So we have this paragraph about Newton. From here to here. Who would like to start? Who starts? Who starts? Any volunteer? Yeah. 
Ya yo leo. Ok, good, Emilio. Desde el título para abajo, todo lo que está subrayado. Uh, everything in yellow, yes. Let's do it. I'm going to uh, do here. Let's go. Thanks. Why aren't people more interested in science? Welcome to my blog, where, where I write about the things that, that I really, ah, really interesting to me. This week, I want to talk a bit about science. Science and science story. Yes. Let's start with Newton. We all know the story, don't we? Back in 166. Isaac Newton was visiting his mother one day and while no and was walking around in her garden. Mm -hmm. He sat down under an apple tree and started thinking. Newton was always thinking about something. That's what science do. So he was sitting and thinking when an apple fell out of the tree mm -hmm. and hit the ground besides him. Besides him. Mm -hmm. Some people would say the apple fell on his face, but who knows? And Newton thought about why things fall down and no up or sideways. And we got the idea of gravity. Mm -hmm. Nice story, isn't it? Only it's, only it's probably not true. Or at least we've got no way of knowing. Oh, qué mal estoy leyendo, profe. No way of knowing. Don't worry. It is true. It's a big like Archimedes. And but you don't know that one. You don't know that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to continue practicing because that's the way we practice English. All right, good. So we have this uh, story about Newton uh, when he went to the his mom's house and uh, a, a tree, an apple, an apple from a tree fell. So it's a good question. Why the apple falls down and not falls up or sideways? So that's that's a question mainly. Why the apple? And then it began. That that's the beginning of, of everything. That's the beginning of science, uh, like heavy science, because if you don't know right now and it's been for a long time, NASA and, 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 and all the people who are sending spaceships and satellites and everything to space, they're using uh, Isaac Newton's calculations. So Newton was correct, okay? So he was very, very, very precise with the calculations. All right, good, good Emilio. Good Emilio. All right, let's continue now with this one. Who would continue? Thanks, Emilio. Very kind. Me. All right, Emiliana. Emilia, Emiliana, let's go. <laughs> okay. So our great mathematician was sitting in his bed one day, more than two thousand years ago, and while he and while he was getting out, mm -hmm. he noticed that the water went down in the bath. So he got back in, and the water went back up. Now I understand, shouted Archimedes. Actually, he shouted Eureka because he was Greek, not English. Mm -hmm. He saw that the level of, level of the water in the bath was directly related to exa exactly how much of his body was in the water, that his relationship was constant. It never changed. Some people say, say that he was so happy about his, his discovery that he ran out into the street without putting his clothes on. <laughs> no, that probably didn't happen either. But he had a good reason to be happy. This was a very important moment in our understanding of math and physics. These stories are hard to believe. But the important thing is that Archimedes and Newton really did exist. And they really did, did come up with those important ideas. Newton worked out that in the earth, gravity, gravity, <laughs> gravity, gravity has yeah. an effect, effect on the movement of an apple. 
then it probably has an effect on the move movement of the moon too. On all kinds of new ideas and discoveries came from that. Yes. All righty, goody. And you might say that these discovery were accidents. In a way they were, but not complete accidents. They needed people like Newton and Archimedes to do the thinking. That, that's the most difficult part, I think. You can be creative, you can be tolerant, patient, you can be have good ideas, but you knew, you have to do the thinking. And, and to do the thinking, you need to be prepared. You need to be a scientist. You need to be a, a mathematician, a physics, uh, a physicist. So it's a bit difficult. And it says here, scientists and mathematicians do a lot of thinking. And because of that, our world is the way it is. So imagine this man came with the idea of, well, the apple fell down and then started everything, everything that came later about gravity and et cetera. So gravity, if you, if you didn't know, is still a mystery, okay? The, the, the physicists, they're still studying gravity because they can't explain many of the things. They can't explain many of the things going on in space with gravity. So it's still a mystery. And maybe when you, when you are an adult or older, they would finally understand gravity. But, but now they know some parts of gravity, but not everything. It's really, really confusing. They say that they're going to try to build uh, gravity, uh, gravity pulsers, you know, gravity engines to travel to other planets. So I don't know how they're gonna make that, but it sounds difficult, it sounds really difficult. Okay, so we have these two people. Um, there's a person, Archimede. Have you ever heard about Archimede in the past? About Archimede? People? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, okay. So you probably know about the floating theory. No, the floating law, no, no, theory. The floating law, la ley de flotación. I think in physics, did you check that in physics? La ley de flotación? People? No, creo que no. No? Okay, maybe not. La ley de flotación es como el, la patada inicial para poder... Eh, eh, poner botes, poner barcos, poner cargueros, eh, portaaviones, cosas que son enormes en el agua y que no se unan. Entonces, eh, lo que pensó Archimedes, eh, finalmente, eh, y, y poniendo un ejemplo muy, muy, muy sencillo que hizo él, que fue, en este caso, lo único que puso fue, eh, él estaba en su baño y estaba tomando una ducha y de repente se dio cuenta que, que si él salía de la, de la tina, porque había agua, bajaba el nivel del agua, y si él entraba a la tina, volvía a la normalidad. Entonces, en base a eso, now we have ships. And when people say, wow, look at those crews. Or when, we, when, when in the summertime, and we see in Coquimbo a lot, of, a lot of cruise ships, we see that they are really big. And people say, wow, how do they float? And they don't go, they don't sink into the water. Wow. Bueno, principio de flotación. O, o principio de la boya. Una, esas dos cosas se llaman. Boya o flotación. Así lo pueden encontrar. Alrighty, so, let's go. Let's match. Ok, we have to match some questions. I mean, the questions here. Okay, we just have to match the questions to the answers. So, for example, what did Newton think about when he saw the apple fall to the ground? Why is things fall down and not up or sideways? Or sideways, yeah, that's true. What did Archimede see when he got out of the bath? The level of the water went down. Level of water went down. That's true. 
Or why did he shout, Eureka? It's a Greek it's for like, no one understand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think we, uh, it's an old word. I remember some, some, some cartoons, they used to say, Eureka. So I was like, wow, what, what a discovery. Uh, and a discovery, no complete accidents. Okay, so that's it, good. Perfect, easy peasy. Eureka, okay. So we're gonna go here to these questions. Okay. Okay, so choose the sentence that explains the blog the best, okay? So some important things happen by accident and you should, you shouldn't believe everything you read about science. Scientists should be more famous than they are. And it's important to know about science. What do you think is the, the best thing, the best way to describe this article, this blog? Some important things happen by accident. You shouldn't believe everything you read on uh, about science. Scientists should be more famous than they are. And it's important to know something about science. The first one. I think the same, Emilio. I think the same. Yeah, some things happen by accident. So let's have a look at some great discoveries or inventions that happened by Electricity in an accident. Accidental discoveries that change the world. I like that. Let's have a look. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wow. Está este tipo, me encanta. Se llama Neil deGrasse. Tiene una serie que se llama Cosmos. Ahí en Netflix. Super recomendada. Si le gusta la astronomía. Y saber de cosas. Okay, let's have a look at this guy. Okay, like la, la conduzca él. Vamos a buscar. When you look at all the stuff humans have invented, you would suspect that these came to be through some sort of exact methodology. Precise, like a laser. Whether it was a new type of medicine or technology or a sort of cool toy or food even. And what if we told you that some of the most known inventions were totally accidental? Mmm, accidental food. Hmm. What, don't believe me? Check out our list of 10 amazing inventions created completely by accident. Enjoy this video and be sure to subscribe to CBR and join the notification squad to stay up to date on all of our latest videos. Coca-Cola. A cold Coke sure hits the spot, and it also cures many maladies like morphine addiction, indigestion, nerve disorders, headaches, and even impotence. All of this, of course, is according to Colonel John Pemberton, Coca-Cola's original inventor. Really? Injured during the American Civil War, he became addicted to morphine, but vowed to get clean by inventing a substitute. In 1885, he rolled out Pemberton's French wine cola nerve tonic. The next year, prohibition laws forced Pemberton to make a non-alcoholic version. Legend has it that in 1886, the owner of the popular Willis Venable Sofa Fountain accidentally served Pemberton's concoction with carbonated water. Microwave ovens. Convenience oh, is key. Oh, wow. Ustedes habían escuchado esta historia de que la Coca-Cola fueron unos años, unos años, sí, cuando decía que, cuando dijo el video de que esta persona era adicta a la morfina y buscaba un sustituto. Lo que le echaban a la Coca-Cola para que sustituyera la morfina en su adicción era cocaína. ¿Sabían, ¿sabían eso? Creo que no. sí. O sea, sí, sí lo había escuchado, pero no. Real, por real. Bueno, ahora no sabía claro. que era real. Claramente no ahora, pero sería bueno saber cómo para qué sirve la coca, o sea, la cocaína, la que, para qué sirve la Coca-Cola. ¿Tendrá algún, tendrá algún beneficio? Porque ahí el tipo mencionó algunos. O sea, alguien que tome Coca-Cola aquí porque le guste mucho. ¿Saben de algún beneficio que tenga la Coca-Cola?
Yo las veces que la he comprado la he hecho al water, porque dicen que limpia las cañerías. Ah, y el óxido. Claro, para decir para el óxido. Creo que puedes remover ahí el óxido. O al útil. Pero bueno, no, no soy mucho de Coca-Cola. Let's go. King these days, and who has the time to wait for a hot dog to boil to perfection? And nonetheless, the first food unintentionally cooked by a microwave was a candy bar. In 1945, Perry Spencer was experimenting with high-power microwave beams while working at Raytheon. The chocolate bar in question was in his pocket at the time, but the sticky mess was still the eureka moment that would change kitchens worldwide. The first food intentionally microwaved was popcorn. In 1947, Raytheon built the Ratter Range, which was a classic. Funky 750 pounds was about five and a half feet tall and cost a whopping five thousand wow. dollars. In 1967, a more accessible version was introduced on market and sold for around four hundred ninety-five dollars. The sandwich, probably the perfect food for your busy modern life. Just try and eat some steaming hot ramen when trying to drive to your job interview. Back in the 1700s, things were considerably slower paced, except for the pace of one John Montague, the fourth Earl of Sandwich. Sandwich was a busy dude. Yes, he held various political offices and military posts, but despite these triumphs, he's still best known for having invented the sandwich. The Earl was a voracious gambler, and the only meal he would eat during cards was salted meat and bread. However, Sandwich's biographer suggests that he was mostly too busy with official commitments, so he probably ate the world's first Sammy at his work desk. X-rays. Are you particularly squeamish at the sight of bones? Especially your own? Well, then you can blame Wilhelm Röntgen for that. Back in 1895, the German physicist was playing around with some Crookes tubes, exploring cathode rays and the energetic electron beams created in the vacuum tubes. Employing a fluorescent screen painted with barium platinum cyanide and wrapping the Crookes tubes in a black cardboard to isolate isolate light from the tube, he cracked off a few shots. He then realized that invisible rays passed through the cardboard and produced a faint green glow on the screen. That really got the wheels turning. The first medical x-ray ever taken was of Röntgen's wife's hand. Anna Bertha Ludwig saw the picture and exclaimed, I have seen my death! The color <laughs> mauve. William mm. Perkin was a precocious adolescent who, at the age of 15, was accepted into the Royal College of Chemistry. During his tutelage under August Wilhelm von Hoffmann, the professor had published a hypothesis on developing synthetic quinine, an expensive natural substance that might be crucial in the fight against malaria. Oh. As one of Hoffmann's assistants, Perkin performed experiments for this endeavor. However, Perkin accidentally discovered the organic compound aniline, which, when manipulated, produced a vibrant shade of purple. Perkin, along with his brother and friend, refined the process in secret to incredible success, producing a color to die for. The pacemaker. This one is a huge ha- Oh, the color morado, que bueno. Wow, okay. The pacemaker, el marca paso. Happy accident Pacemaker. for roughly three million people worldwide. In the 1950s, Wilson Greatbatch left the Navy and was working as a medical researcher. One project he worked on was to build an oscillator that could record heart sounds. In the process of building it, he mistakenly installed the wrong resistor. He turned it on and noticed that it produced a rhythmic electrical pulse. He soon came to the realization that this could be incredibly beneficial to people with natural heart pace problems. Before the device was small enough to go inside of a person, the prototypes were about the size of a TV and were prone to delivering electrical shocks. The first successful pacemaker <laughs> implant occurred in 1958. Silly Putty. It's weird to think that something with such a light-hearted name could be the byproduct of something very serious. During the Second World War, the Japanese military took many rubber-producing countries so desperately needed by the Allies to produce materials for the war effort. The rubber shortage caused two groups of inventors to research what we now know as Silly Putty. Despite the fact that the product did exhibit Silly Putty, ¿cómo se llama eso? Que hace poco estaban como muy populares, que, que muchos de ustedes lo ocupaban, o sea, no ustedes, pero... Los niños más chicos lo tenían en la sala y se pegaban así, vea. Eran de colores. El slime. El slime, ya, yeah, entonces parece que es lo mismo some promising qualities such as its bounciness, greater elasticity, anti-mold, and a higher melting temperature, the putty still didn't have what it took to replace rubber completely. Now if only they had researched how to make an army made of silly putty soldiers. Penicillin. 
If Alexander Fleming's mother had harped on him to clean his room as a child, then maybe we might not have ever come across the miracle drug we now know as penicillin. In 1928, Fleming returned to his untidy laboratory after a family getaway. Prior to having left, Fleming had left cultures of Staphylococci on a bench in the corner of his lab. What he noticed in his absence was the culture had been contaminated by fungus, which in turn had neutralized the colonies of Staphylococci in its vicinity. In Fleming's own words, when I woke up just after dawn on September 28, 1928, I certainly didn't plan to revolutionize all medicine by discovering the world's first antibiotic or bacteria killer, but I suppose that's exactly what I did. Saccharin, or artificial sweetener. It okay, may not be food per se, but it does pass the lips of millions of dieters. Fitting that the inventor's taste buds helped in its discovery. Konstantin Falberg, a Russian chemist working at John Hopkins University, was tinkering with coal tar derivatives to no avail. He was so engrossed with his work that he forgot to eat dinner and had to take a late meal. He also forgot to wash his hands. Eating a piece of bread, he noticed a sweet flavor. In fact, everything he touched was sweet. He mm. rushed back to the lab and licked every beaker and petri dish he had until he found the right one. Sweet. Potato chips. Old buddy, you always made that bus ride home after work so much more tolerable. But the popular snack has come a long way from its humble beginnings as a plain chip to now a slew of nouveau flavors like Montreal Steak Spice or Pickled Yak Fist. Okay, I made that last one up. The first record of the potato chip was found in William Kitchener's cookbook, The Cook's Oracle, in 1817. Mm. However, old Frito didn't lay down roots until 1853, when a patron of Moon's Lake House in Saratoga Springs, New York, repeatedly sent his dinner back to the kitchen, claiming that the potatoes were just too thick. Out of spite, the cook, Charles Crum, sliced them razor thin, fried the crap out of them, and added a lot more salt. The customer loved them, and now we all do. So there you have it. That's our 10 amazing inventions. Oh, potato chips. Ah, awesome. Chips. I love chips, man. They're incredible. All right, you guys. So what you're going to do, I'm going to post this week a bit of a homework a super tiny homework on the google classroom uh, and here it talks about the following thing so what you have to do is you have to write down three more so what the thing is you're going to explain how the internet how the telephone how medicine how the fridge and three more things have helped our society okay so we'll be one two three four five six seven you can do it in Google. Um, I'm going to put it like a question. And you can answer the question in Google Classroom, okay? So I'm going to put it like a question in the afternoon, and you're going to have the complete week to finish it, okay? Uh, now tell me, who in this class is going to the school next week? Because I think Alondra said peace also. Who else is going to the school next week? No one. Okay. All right, people. Pleasure. Thank you, Emilio and and, and Emiliana for cooperation. Sergio, you too. Very nice. Um, have a good Friday. Happy Fridays. And uh, remember to sleep. Take care, you people. Have good fun. I'll see you around on Friday. Have a great weekend. You too. Have a bye. Bye bye. Bye.